Welcome ladies and gentlemen, PDIC 2019 here in Toronto and we are still at the Max Silver Lunch and now with me here is Dr. Peter McGough, the Chief Exploration Officer of Max Silver because we want to get his view on the new drill results and what it means for the future of the company. Peter, welcome. It's always a pleasure, Achim. Yeah, pleasure to have you here. Now let's talk about those new fantastic drill results. Please elaborate on that. Well, um, we're obviously very delighted with the bulk of them which prove that the deep zone is real and the vein is nice and wide and the grades are high, especially with uh, yeah. remarkably so high silver grades, especially at that depth. I mean, we're now more than a thousand meters below the top of the Bonanza zone and we're still seeing what anybody would call Bonanza grade silver. Uh, but to me, the most exciting part was the two things. One is the pre-anticipata vein, and this is starting yeah. to get ridiculous, but we have the main vein and then we have what they call the anticipata vein because that was above the main vein. They're parallel, yeah. and now we have another one yeah. above that. Yeah. So we now, with every drill hole in the eastern end of the Valdecanias vein, yeah. we get cuts through three different veins. That's First crazy. pre anticipata then anticipata then wow. the main one. And even more exciting than that is further to the west, uh, right where the two principal Valdecanias veins overlap, we have a northeast trending vein that comes in there. And this is the first cross vein that's ever been seen. So most of the veins in the district, the ones that have been mined for the last 450 years, all trend northwest. And so for the first time, we have one that trends northeast. Uh -huh. and. It's a member of a family. We, can, we, we see this thing underground now. We've cut it in a drill hole. We're starting to understand what's going on. You do have to remember that there's a bit of a sort of a intellectual barrier that, that is in the way of, of, of realizing that something is very different from what you've thought yeah. before. But once that happens, then you start looking around and go, oh, I can see it over here. And that happens to coincide where that vein projects into the Valdecanias vein is where the grade goes up and the width goes up. Yeah. And there's another one that does the same thing. And then Valdecanias itself comes out of the overlap zone, which we now recognize as an ore fluid or a mineralizing fluid upwelling point. So the fluids rise from depth through this complex structural zone and they spread outward from that. And being able to recognize that and recognizing that that northeast trend was open and receptive to mineralization means that there may be who knows how many more of these things. So it's, um, okay. as, as George says, it's the gift that keeps on giving and exactly. we can't get away from it. We would like yeah. to explore outside the area, but every yeah. time we explore right in or around Valdecanis, we keep finding things. Wow. So you can't beat that. Well, that's, that's for sure, yeah, because I think also um, uh, as it is a very nice proximity, it's much cheap to develop, right? Yes, uh, these are, in the case of anticipata and pre-anticipata, they are 50 and 100 meters into the hanging wall of the main vein. Yeah. So it's simply a question of driving a cross cut mm -hmm. out there and, and digging them out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the case of anticipata, it may be more important, and not anticipata, venadas, because the vein actually may get wider and more coherent along those intercepts, so you wind up with more tonnage right in there and then working away from that. So that's the kind of thing the mining engineers like a lot is new tons very close to the existing mining infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. So you, you makes them, them very smiling. happy. Uh, Always got to keep them smiling because they're the ones who ultimately give me the the drilling go ahead. To uh, that's say. What do you think is the reason that all of a sudden those cross veins are coming in? I mean, you, you, you said it's all parallel structures, which is totally un understandable, mm -hmm. geologically wise. And all of a sudden you have a cross vein. So there must be like a, I don't know, volcanic event or a tectonical event. Or I, what, I, think what there's, I think there's a tectonic event. I think we're just beginning to understand. You have to remember that we don't have very good outcrop. Most of the, most of the historic part of the Fresno district is covered by fields. Mm -hmm. So you don't have outcrops that you can work from. Um, but what we think is happening is that there's a, there's a major regional construction structure that localizes where the veins are. Yeah. And we think it takes a bend right around the Northeast corner of the mountain. Wow. And when that sort of thing happens, it tends to distort the regional stress patterns. So 
it just, you know, I don't want to get too technical about this, yeah. but basically it changes the direction in which things will open. So we think with that change in direction, we now have the ability to open two different directions instead of one, and that hasn't been Whoa. seen before. And we don't know what the implications of, of, of that change, yeah. uh, but we're certainly eager to find out because it appears to be mineralized. And so anything that's mineralized, we want to chase. Definitely, yeah. So how much money you want to spend this year? Oh, I want to. I want to spend twenty million dollars on exploration. Yeah, but probably I suspect George will not like that because he wants to finish the build the construction. Right? <laughs> that, that's probably true. You asked me how much I wanted to drill. Uh, yeah. We will. We're, we're working on a one and a half million dollar budget for the first quarter, mm -hmm. but we expect to see um, probably more than that on an average basis per quarter for the mm -hmm. rest of the year. So mm -hmm. that we're going. We just had our exploration <clears throat> meeting last week, and we haven't had the technical committee following that. Um, our history on the property has been they let us drill, and if we happen to find something, then they give us more money to drill. So yeah. we'll just keep drilling. And we hope to do a lot of this from underground, which should bring down the cost per intercept of a mineralized structure mm -hmm. down very significantly. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, last question. Do you have to change anything in the technical report? Let's, let's assume you keep finding and finding and finding. And all of a sudden you can say, oh, Jesus Christ, our resource is 20 or 30 percent higher. Do you have to do that new before you go in production? Or can you say, okay, you know what? We can do that anyway in the second half of 2020. When we are in production, we make money, we have time for that. What, what, what requires the law or what, what do you think is required? Well, clearly a major change in how much resource you have in a particular category or area would, could potentially change your ability or necessity of doing a technical report. Mm -hmm. But the thing to remember is that what we're building right now is a mine based on the Bonanza zone, which is all yep. in indicated, it's very well studied, and it's very well understood. The deep zone, which is where the recent drill results are, that's almost entirely in the inferred category. Mm -hmm. And to drill that to indicate it, mm -hmm from the surface would be very time consuming and very expensive and not very efficient. Yeah. So, you know, we, we may put off, we'll, we'll continue chasing it. We'll continue trying to figure out how big it is. Yeah. Uh, but what you have to do in terms of inferred resources is much less than what you have to do for indicated. So mm -hmm. we don't see that there's enough of an impact on indicated uh, to yeah. stale date, if of you course. will. Our, yeah. our existing technical report. But eventually yeah. we'll have to do one. And, and that's, yeah. that's, that's, you want to be in the position of doing that. It's kind of like paying taxes. It hurts, but it tells you that you made some money. Yeah. So at it's the end of the day, problem, it's, a, it's a luxury problem. Yes. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like everything is really on track. And I saw also beautiful photos uh, from the development, underground, also surface workings look outstanding. So you guys really go in production. I was, I was just down the week before last and we drove probably 12 of the 18 kilometers of the development. Yeah. And it's, it's like being in a Swiss railroad tunnel. It's oh, beautiful. I love that because our <laughs> tunnels are beautiful. <laughs> Super. Well, Peter, thank you very much. Keep it going, I would say, and uh, drill some more of those good holes, and I'm pretty sure you will do. And, <clears throat> of course, we look forward that you go to production. Well, we're not any more than we are. We really want to see. We're really looking forward to seeing this thing in production. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this was Dr. Peter McGough, um, the uh, Chief Exploration Officer of Maxilver, and you heard it also technical-wise. Everything is in perfect shape. They keep finding and finding and finding fantastic rates, silver, gold and much much more so i would say we wait for second half of 2020 and this is gonna be a fantastic mind check out the company thanks for watching us bye bye from toronto